Hello and welcome to the Booksplosion, These Violent Delights live show. Today we're going to be talking about These Violent Delights. Did you say These is... Violent Delights? No, Violent. I thought you said Violet. I was like, what? No, These Violent Delights have violent ends. <laughs> um, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. And before we get started, uh, our July book of the month, is The Lucky List. We're working with Simon & Schuster this month and this is a contemporary and there is romance and a bucket list. And do we want to talk about this now or we'll talk about it at the end? Let's, sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. We can talk about it now? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so The Lucky List is about um, I think she's the 17 or 18 year old girl. She's going into her senior year of high school. She's right? in high school. Yeah, she, maybe she's going into her senior year of high school. And um, her mother has passed away. And um, her dad decides that like they should move. And he brings his friend and his best friend's daughter to come help them move. And she is cleaning out her mom's closet and she finds this old bucket list from when her mom was in high school and this girl that's helping her move like there's some chemistry between the two of them and like a romance starts to bud and they start to they decide to do the bucket list that her mom had together and it sounds like it's gonna be super cute bucket lists are so fun in books um and yeah that's the lucky list and she starts to feel closer to her mom as uh she does she goes through the list yeah okay now these violent delights very different in tone when they say <laughs> violent delights they mean violent delights um this takes place in 1920s shanghai mm -hmm. and there is there are these two rival gangs called the Scarlet Gang and the White Flowers Gang. And the White Flowers Gang is Russian. And I think the uh, Scarlet Gang is just original people from Shanghai area. And uh, they're constantly killing each other for control over the city. And there are a lot of foreigners coming in trying to just now take control themselves and eliminate these gangs and um it's there's a lot of political stuff going on there and there's also a fantastical element with this monster and a plague and um did i do an okay job anyone else want to jump in i mean you can talk about how it's a romeo and juliet retelling oh it's a romeo and juliet retelling but don't expect a lot of romance it's heavier on the gang the loosely, gang rivalry. Loosely based. It's less of a retelling and more of inspired. We follow yeah. Roma and Juliet who come from these rival gangs. And when they were 15, they fell in love. But then Roma betrayed Juliet. And she went to New York, where she's been for the last four years living in America. And she has just now come back to Shanghai to assume her position as heir to her gang. And that's when all the conflict between the gangs with the blood feud and this monster and this contagion that is making people like rip their throats out. It, it all starts off from there. <laughs> it's it's we we get a very detailed view of the yeah. throats being ripped out every it's time. Really <laughs> <Is it not? laughs> the detail. <laughs> <laughs> like the tendons and the they're uh. the second that I found out that like insects were involved, I was like, "Oh, Christine's gonna just have some." I was so freaked out by the whole plague incident. <laughs> yeah, I did not. I did not like any of that. I mean, like story wise, it was good, but yeah. like but just the visual, like yeah, the visuals and like it. But it's not like in there, so they're like in them, and it's just, it's like a nightmare come to yeah, life. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I thought it was. I <laughs> so, do we want to talk about our general feelings? Yeah. No, sorry. I am supposed to be hosting this. Okay. So, we're going to give our general thoughts, and then we're going to go into spoilers. Um, we kind of just gave some general thoughts, but who wants to kick us off with their oh, general God. personal thoughts? I Jessie? will. Give it okay. to us. I love this book. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Mind you, it was not what I was expecting at all. For some reason, yeah. I, was, I didn't really read the description going in. I was just like, okay, Romeo and Juliet retelling, um, fantasy elements, I'm into it. Um, I was expecting more fantasy for some reason going into it, but I ended up really liking it. I liked that it wasn't super focused on the romance personally. I was into that. Um, I loved our cast of characters. I loved kind of like the mystery elements, trying to figure out this whole like plague situation with the whole ripping out of the throats. Um, and I liked like the political intrigue. There was like a lot more politics than I was expecting there to be. Um, yeah, I just like really loved our cast of characters. It was great. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Kitten. Yeah, I also loved this book. Like I I think I will say that it's my favorite book of the year so far. What? Um, oh nice. my god. I haven't read that many books this year. <laughs> I mean, I think you've read a decent amount. But I did really love this. Um, although I do think that might favorite book of the year so far is coming out on Tuesday, so. <laughs> oh, you like this more than the Sky Blues? Yeah. <laughs> That's so different that yeah, it's hard to like compare them to each other. But right. it's just, I love so many things about it. I love the Romeo and Juliet aspects. I loved the enemies or the, the like lovers who aren't supposed to be lovers to enemies to yeah. reluctant allies to love like I, I just love that all that whole dynamic there was so great um i love the atmosphere of this book like the descriptions of the setting were just really rich and like the, the city was just a, a very vivid atmospheric setting which i really enjoyed um like jesse said the cast of characters was great i love getting to know all of them um the fantasy element was something that it wasn't quite what I expected because I did expect it to be more fantasy before reading it. And then while I was reading it, it was like such a light fantasy. It was like science-y fantasy. That, that it was like was science fiction. Like it was gonna be proven to be not a monster at all. And like no fantasy element. It was just like mm -hmm. someone yeah. doing something, like someone in a costume or like something like, something like it, that. It um, kind of turned out to be like more science-y. Yeah, than definitely fantasy. more science than fantasy. Um, but I still really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the mystery. There were, I, I, I liked following along with the mystery because I didn't find that easily predictable. But there were some elements that um, I kind of saw coming because of the Romeo and Juliet illusions, um, which we can talk more about that in the spoiler section. But yeah, for the most part, I love this book. I'm so excited to read the sequel. It comes out in... Um, November in a couple months here, and it's a duology, so it's just the sequel, Christine. It's only one more book. <laughs> okay, it's so funny because I felt so many the opposite ways of you two when I was reading this. Really? So yeah, I just like predicted everything. So I was just like, obviously that was gonna happen. When they discovered, I was like, when why did you guys figure this out? Like in the beginning, when like I thought we all knew this already. Um, but just like I don't know, I I was expecting. I think I was expecting more romance stuff, and it was like very light. And um, there was a lot of gore and like creeping me out stuff with the monster, which made me like, oh, I don't want to listen to this. <laughs> like, just stop, skip past this. Um, and um, I just, I, I mean, I didn't like not like it. It was just like a little heavy on the atmospheric stuff, which I always tend to like want more character stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of characters, so we didn't really get to know them as well as I like to get to know characters. It was just like, like all the things, like a lot, some people tilt more that way and I tilt more character based, I tilt more romance based and this was more like, political intrigue and uh, gore and violence and like all the things that I lean away from when I like <laughs> reading. I mean, I'll give you the romance aspect a little bit because I kind of wanted more from the romance as well. Like, I, I, I don't know if I wanted more in present day or like more flashbacks of them like falling in love the first time. I could have done either one yeah, or yeah, more, preferably both. <laughs> I could have gone for more in that department, um, but it wasn't like a mark against this book for me. I wonder yeah. if it like, wasn't as romancy in this book because it's leading into like, like obviously it's a duology, so maybe it's gonna be like more at the forefront with the next book, do you think? And that's why yeah, she's maybe, maybe, 
opening it up a little bit. I don't know. Well, one of the, we one of the flashbacks. That's true. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I just also like was upsetting to me was that I, I didn't know it was a duology, but at the end, he's gonna just hate her again. And I'm just like, we we spent the whole book getting past the hatred and learning that so you guys still excited. love we're each other. Spoiler territory. Oh yeah. We are going to hop into spoilers. We spoilers have not are been, coming. Going into spoilers, but if you have any questions for us, drop them in the comments. We'll be answering questions. Yeah, yeah. okay. Spoilers are coming right now. Here we go. Ready? Okay. I was excited for them to both die at the end, and they didn't <laughs> both die at the end. I knew they were going to die the second book, so like, obviously. Well, I didn't know there was a second oh. book. Obviously. <laughs> so, I was like, oh my gosh, yay, they're going to both die in a romantic way at the end. I'm excited for the original. They both die at the end, and they didn't both die at the end. Well, um, one thing that about dying, characters dying, where did, did either of you guys figure out that Marshall was Mercutio and was therefore going to get killed at some point? Uh, yeah, I was waiting for every, every cousin to be Mercutio. And every time they introduced a cousin, I was like, damn, another cousin, another cousin. Well, Whose cousin's going to die? Their, their names are kind of similar. Like, Marshall is Mercutio, Tyler is what's his name, Tybalt or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Benedict is like Ben Volio or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but being that it's like inspired, like she could always just go a different way and kill a different cousin. Like sure. I was, well, I was well, thinking that. Mercutio's personality of like being outgoing and talkative. Mm -hmm. I kept getting Marshall and Benedict confused. Uh, maybe it's cause I wasn't reading with my eyes and like I needed to see their names written down, um, but. Um, yeah, I was just picturing them both as like very similar personalities, which I guess they definitely weren't. <laughs> um, I would say that like, because I listened to the audiobook, I didn't really love the audiobook. I didn't really love it either. I think that's part of maybe why, because uh, some of the character voices were like, yeah, she did like a weird whisper voice. Yeah, and for like, like Catherine and for uh. Uh, her other cousin, Rosamond, I think, is that her name? Yeah, her. They both have very whispery voices. And when, like, Juliet was, like, yelling or, like, being intense, she would be, like, a whisper yell. And I was just like, this <laughs> sounds not right for this. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I read it with my eyeballs, so I got to do all my own voices. <laughs> 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 what voices did you give them? Give us something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't do it on the fly. You put me on the spot. <laughs> what was Juliet's voice like? Yeah, come on, cat. <laughs> Normal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like your it own voice. Weird. I feel like with the lead character, I usually just like put in my own voice for them. Yeah. Um, uh, but Roma's voice was pretty good in the audiobook. It had a very like sultry, like. It was like cool guy voice. <laughs> okay, so let's move forward here. Um, so did you guys um, feel like you knew what was gonna happen at all times because of the Romeo and Julia inspiration or no? And what did you pick up that was like, ooh, like when they got that vial of death vial, it was like, ooh, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna die together. So I, I've, I've never read. <laughs> Are you familiar with it? I'm oh, obviously familiar. Like I know that like what happens in the end. Obviously Romeo and Juliet like they kill themselves or whatever. I can give you like a one sentence summary. So Mercutio dies. They're <laughs> in love, and um, they decide to run away together. And Juliet takes this potion that puts her to sleep but it looks like she's dead but it's like to escape so like they put her in like a thing when she's dead yeah. and that's when she planned on escaping but romeo finds her and is like oh my god she's dead and um he's like put drinks this poison because he's no, like if he she's dead himself. yeah doesn't he stab himself no, he drinks his, his, he drinks poison, then maybe stabs himself, and then she kisses him to get the poison from his lips when she wakes up so that she could die too. And they're both big idiots because they could have both lived. Okay, well, in their defense, they are like 13 and 15. They are like 13, yeah. It's, they're very young. Wow. 
I like that there were 19 in this book. And Juliet proposes after knowing Romeo for like two days. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like we don't really get the build of their romance. They're just like in love. I was like Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? Deny thy flowers and blah blah blah. Like, wow, I was made to memorize a whole thing and present it to the class. I can't believe you guys didn't have to do that. I didn't have to memorize the whole thing, but we did study it, and I do remember quite a bit. So like, I, I there's all these scenes that have like parallels. Yeah. Like, the masquerade scene, which is yeah, like, yeah, I was excited like, about that scene. scene. And there's the balcony scene where Roma like scales up Juliet's balcony, and she's like, "I'm gonna call security on you. Like, what are you doing?" Here? <laughs> um, what else was there? I didn't like the drought of like living death, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Juliet signs that. It's like, oh, she's gonna use that later, but then she ends up using it on, on Marshall. Marshall. To successfully fake a death. Yeah. Well, you know, well wait, did you guys have a favorite scene? Oh. Mm -hmm. I like the scenes when they were ripping out their own throat. <laughs> All the insects <laughs> coming out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. My favorite was when they got drunk and they're on the bed and they finally like confronted their romance and then when Juliet went you home like the one romance scene is the one thing that you like in the book. and I love the scene when she gets home and she like takes the shovel and rips up her garden and she's just like uh, 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 like knocking it against the tree and I think like Catherine comes out there she's like what is wrong with you have you become unhinged I think maybe that was Rosamond um it was Rosalind, yeah. yeah it's not Catherine it's Kathleen you should yeah. Kathleen. Oh man. <laughs> sorry. She has your name. I take personal offense to her. <laughs> I'm Catherine. sorry. I heard it in my ears and I'm a you visual often learner. Called Catherine by people who don't know what cat stands for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had the same thing. I know your pain. I'm yeah. sorry, Christine. <laughs> like my friend Kathleen even used to be called Catherine all the time. It's like how yeah, do, because how, how do people get that switched up? In their it's because they only know Cat, so they just assume it's Catherine. Yeah, it's because Catherine is more well known than Kathleen. It's yeah, and it's just yeah. like with my name, they'll even read it as Christine, but they'll say Christina. Right. Or right. Kristen. It's just like the same sort of like mix up all the time. My dad always calls you Christina when he asks about you. <laughs> My uncle calls me Christina, and I'm like, hello. <laughs> We're, We're family. Please. Um, um, let's see. What favorite were scenes. Favorite scene is really difficult. Um, I liked that balcony scene. Yeah, the balcony um, scene. I like that scene too. That was really cute, and that was the first time that Roma called her by the the Russian term of endearment, Durogoya. Um, and I, I, <laughs> I have read some Yuri on Ice fanfic, and so <laughs> like Russian terms of endearment, I'm familiar with. So like when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's so cute. Um, I also really liked the scenes with Marshall. Like when him and Juliet have that little confrontation where they like like have a really quick fight and then all of a sudden they're just like, oh. I like that too. And, and the, the ending scene with Marshall where mm -hmm. it's revealed that like he's alive and he has to stay in the safe house. And like they have- Knew he was alive. Even though he was alive, I feel like it was a great scene. Yeah, it was so fun <laughs> scene though. Well, what I wanted to happen was Roma to come in there too and be like, la la la, happy family. <laughs> we have another book to go for. Yeah, scale. we'll have that in the next book. <laughs> we could have had a result here. <laughs> um, Jesse, what was your favorite scene? The scene with the fake not dead. Even though I knew it was real. Or not real, I mean. I also like the scene when she and Roma were there with that guy who was like ha 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 let me inject you with the vaccine i love you <laughs> yeah that oh, paul, dexter. Paul. paul dexter yeah, yeah paul, paul dexter and um he was just like i tried to save you and i like when he was like i tried to save you but i have to murder you now and then he he gets murdered okay so is his body missing is he potentially it still feels alive? like it well the the bug is missing obviously the bug is missing, and it, it sounded like when kathleen was there at the end and she was like 
there's only one body. Like it's all. Yeah. Like, but he could have an accomplice because it said like if I die, then release them release all. So like, yeah, there's someone working with him. Yeah. At least what all more monsters? Is that what's happening? No, I think it's more bugs to poison people and create monsters, perhaps, you know. I don't know, but I don't like it. <laughs> um my favorite scene, either the Juliet and Marshall fight or when the one thing that Marshall asked of Juliet in the safe house was to see oh, Benedict. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to cause some problems. I feel like Benedict is going to end up killing someone in the next book. And it's just going to create so much more conflict than we need. Do you think it's going to be like Hamlet and they all just die? Why do you sound so excited about that? <laughs> Yeah, you sound a little too excited. <laughs> because it never happens in modern books. I think it would be fun for everyone to die. No, I yeah, think yeah. that Roma and Juliet are going to fake their deaths and run off together. Do you think well, they'll end up dying, though? Do you think they'll end up... Do you think what? They'll end up dying, Roma and Juliet? No, they're, they're going to fake their deaths and run off together. Because the are off... already failing in Shanghai. Like, the Communist Party is rising to power. Yeah. And um, the Scarlet Gang, like, as far as gangs go, they're not that bad. At least, like, Julia has two loving parents. Whereas Roma's dad is, like, an asshole. And, like, we should get rid of him. <laughs> he can go. Yeah. Um, let's see. They're talking a lot about communists. I don't remember Chinese history. Not I, yeah, we never learned about Chinese history. So I, I, was, I was personally wondering while we while I was reading like what the actual history was and if this like really lined up with it or if this was like a historical fiction version of it it feels like it probably is kind of accurate to what was going on at the time there's an author's note in the back that says that like the rise of the communist party was relatively accurate but she actually had to like tone down some of their protests and like riots because if she included them accurately in the book. It'd be like every single chapter was getting disrupted by these protests and riots. Okay. Um, yeah, it's really interesting because again, like we're not taught much. And I, um, Mackenzie says that she took Asian history. Like we weren't even offered, I feel like Asian history. I feel like it's like world history. We had world history. Yeah. We yeah. Just, we just kind of brushed over. Other yeah. The yeah, there was European <laughs> history you could take or world history, which was just like very, you know, brushed over everything else. <laughs> and also very focused on on um, American history. Yeah. And, and European. I, America, yeah, well, my, mine like even brushed over European unless you took the European class. So it's just like all you had to think American history one and you had to think American history two. Yeah. Um, so that's like what I remember most and everything else kind of like forces together. <clears throat> I bet there's a good crash course episode on this. I bet there is. <laughs> okay, who was your favorite character? Which characters kind of stood out to you? I I liked Juliet the most, I would say, but I also really loved like her side characters, Kathleen was my favorite. Kathleen was a great character. And uh, I like, I feel like there's a lot of like a lot going on with Juliet that I wanted to explore that in Roma, we didn't have as much exploration, but with Juliet, like she has this really violent reputation and she became this hardened version of herself because of what happened with Roma. Yeah. And I think that's like super interesting to explore. I want to like explore her past like the rumors about her like murdering her lovers in America like she said one of the things was true and it was probably like the she, it was like I murdered four guys who like came at me in the street or like I murdered some like guy with my pearls or whatever in America and um but I would love to like hear about her like it's so um hear about her like journey there because I'm sure it wasn't instantaneous and she had to do so much in America, like she was talking about, like to make people like think that she was like demure and like make people like trust her. She had to like act a certain way and put on like this fake Julia. And then there's this other like hardened Julia that she needs to be to be the heir um, in uh, Shanghai. So that was really interesting. With Roma, I kind of felt like we don't really know him very well. He's such a stale character, and I was very surprised by that. Like I wanted to explore him a little bit more, but I felt yeah. like. 
I don't know, he just wasn't as like interesting as Juliet was, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I think part of that is we don't find out the reasoning of his betrayal until the very end, until like mm. the end. And I feel like from the beginning, I thought something was up with that. I was like, he wouldn't just like betray her randomly. Oh, yeah. Like there has to be some reason he did it. Um, so I was just like waiting for that explanation the whole time. And I think that if we had gotten that earlier, we could have explored more. Death I still feel like he doesn't have like a a thing that kind of like is his defining characteristic. He's like he wants to please his father and yeah. get his spot back. He wants to protect his sister, but like what is I don't know. I just don't feel like I know him. <laughs> his, his whole thing is that he doesn't really particularly want to be there. Like he was like if I could take my loved ones and like peace out. I absolutely would in a heartbeat. Um, but like he, but he's also in a position where it's like, well, being the heir is better than being not the heir. So like, he does want to like keep his position. Yeah. Uh, is it yeah. Dimitri who's like being prepped to take his position? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah. Do spend, I, I feel like we just spend more time with Juliet. She's like our main, main character. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see here. So in terms of classics, um, how did you feel about this, like being a classical retelling and are there any other class? Like, I feel like, have we read that many classics that we really enjoyed that come to mind when you want a retelling? Because a retelling could be much more fun and modernized. This is like a cool modernized for like, when when, when was Romeo and Juliet? Like the 1500s or the 1400s and the six lives in like 1920. Um, but to bring something like, I guess like a lot of Shakespeare has been modernized. Like she's the yeah. man and. Yeah, I like a lot of the Shakespeare ones. Uh, 10 Things yeah. I Knew About You, The Taming yeah. of the um, And yeah, She's the Man is a great one. Yeah, She's the Man is fabulous. Um, I feel like. And then there's ones like um, Easy A for the Scarlet Letter. But I yeah, that was a great one. I hate the Scarlet Letter. I love Easy A. I know. The Scarlet Letter is terrible. So it's like all so these things that we really don't like. Yeah, I have like a, such a, a like a, a grudge against that book. <laughs> I have like, such a grudge up against like Madame Bovary. I just remember being so annoyed by that book the whole time. And like to see stuff like that be modernized and be fun would be great. Cause they kind of like poke fun a little bit at the classic and like also are inspired by the plot and such. Yeah. Um, but I wrote down Little Women for this answer because I, but I feel like that probably is a little woman retelling, you know, like it's just like a sister story about a girl who wants to be a writer. Like there's definitely lots of books that kind of follow that trajectory. Um, that doesn't want to get married, that sort of uh, fun. <sighs> um, but what about side characters? Like what characters stood out the most other than Kathleen? Because there's so many. Um. <laughs> like you. I was was afraid, it aside from like Kathleen and Marshall, those are the two that like stood out to me the most and that I liked the most. Um the other ones that I stood like out didn't stand out for a good reason. It was like Tyler and Paul. We're being mm -hmm. <laughs> what about the scientist guy? I feel like they're being so haphazard with their science. They're like, open up her scalp and just like take one out. I was like, hello. They're just gonna get on you, you stupid idiots. <laughs> well, I mean, how else did you do science back at that time? I don't know, put on a suit or something. <laughs> Protectors, I feel like common, I mean, just like common logic would be like, put on some gloves. <laughs> like, Roma literally has to like snap off his beard. I was like, what kind of scientist are you? Like, tie back your beard. <laughs> We got some very vivid images of her brain and the tendons and the bugs fucking eating her brain. Like that was some nasty ass shit. <laughs> I guess um, Elisa was a fun little addition, kind of. She was. I wish I learned. We got to know her a little better. Obviously, it's tragic that she got infected, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if there's going to be any side effects because she was in that under for so long. Yeah. 
I mean, I have, I have some questions about all the science stuff. Like, yeah, would, would the cure really just be killing the monster, and then like that made all those bugs die? Yeah, that kind of didn't make sense to me. Yeah, in the terms of like, how, they'll be fine. And how they were like keeping her um, sedated and unconscious until they found a cure. But like, as soon as the monster died, like she woke up, like she just overcame all the sedatives. Yeah, and the stuff in her, like, it was eating her. Like, that's... Yeah, ugh. I feel like there's got to be some kind of repercussion. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, my God. It's, so, it's like, actually freaking me out a lot to think about it. I don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> um, the hazmat suit was invented in the 14th century. Wow. So it was around. Nice, Kate. <laughs> nice Google. <laughs> um, yeah, it would be weird if she was magically fine. Juliet stealing the white powder. Wait, when did that happen? Why can't I remember it? Not the powder, but the... The, the vial? The vial, yeah. Was it a liquid? It was just described as being, like, opaque white. Oh, yeah. And she, like, was like, I dare you to say something about this. And she was uh, stealing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Marshall was just so chaotic. <laughs> What do you guys think is going to happen in the next book? Oh, I have a theory about something. Okay, drop um, yeah. it. Tell us. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh. Hey, I, Kat. Tell us. Well, now. Kat, can you, can you tell us, Kat? <laughs> Kat. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that Rosalind is the spy. Oh, yeah. She was not the nicest at times. Was... Not, not just that, but like she seems really jealous of Juliet. Yeah. And she also seems really concerned with her position in the gang. She's mm -hmm. like, because we're not of that last name, like we're not really a part of the gang. Like she yeah. doesn't actually have any loyalty to the gang. And like someone in the inner circle is betraying <gasps> her. And also if it's Rosalind, that's like a more thematically um, powerful betrayal to Juliet because it's like not only one of the inner circle of her gang, but like, her cousin, one of her best friends, like in her. her yeah, cousin, no, she's yeah. definitely it. Your theory is definitely going to be correct. Uh, no. And then she also seemed like so anxious about like when uh, Lord, how do you say it? Because the pronunciation in the audiobook, Sai? Yeah. Sai. Yeah, I think it's Sai. Uh, when, when Lord Sai had, like, had his whole thing, like she got, got really anxious about that and was like also encouraging her sister Kathleen to like not get involved with Juliet because like I feel like Rosalind is getting ready to peace out. Mm. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm really glad that Kathleen was just like, you know what, screw this. I'm not <laughs> dealing with you. <laughs> like I'm going to help Juliet and um bye. <laughs> and also Rosalind doesn't know we got that story about how um Kathleen knocked out that burlesque dancer and like thought she had killed her and then Juliet kind of took the blame for that and so I, I feel that also affected Rosalind's view of her because Rosalind is like Juliet just attacked my friend randomly and then my friend gets sent away and like Juliet gets away with everything. Oh yeah wasn't her friend like an asshole too? And that's yeah, she was, yeah yeah but yeah. like Rosalind doesn't see it that way Rosalind sees Juliet gets away with everything Juliet gets everything she wants um a lot yeah. of a lot of jealousy there and a lot of worries about her own position in the gang so like and, and uh, uh, on the other side the white flowers they care less about family name and more about like anyone can work their way up the ranks like it's not yeah. about relationships it's about like your own personal ambition yeah. so i think rosalind's a spy <laughs> are there things from the original story that weren't referenced in this one that you think could be referenced in the next not except for the funeral and stuff and like the actual death things yeah. oh um them getting married Roman and julia getting married that could happen <laughs> yeah because they get in the play they get secretly married oh 
<laughs> yeah, I remember the scene when because we watched this freshman year the movie and like there's they uh, have a sex scene I think after they get married and like you see her boobs and it was the scandal of the town <laughs> like it was like oh my god you see Juliet's boobs in the in the movie oh and that's like all I really remember from the movie is that boob scene because it was like oh my god nudity in a movie we're watching at school. <laughs> Um, did you guys watch that movie or no? Like the classical I, Romeo and Juliet movie? I think so. Um, I feel like we had to get permission slips from our parents <laughs> because of the boob scandal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's so funny. But yeah, I tried. Did you guys watch the the Romeo and Juliet with Leo? Because I tried to watch it and it was like so horrible. I couldn't get through like more than fifteen minutes. Like they were talking so strangely, but they were like in a modern environment. And also sometimes like their what their mouths were saying didn't line up with what was coming out of their mouth. So it looked like it was dubbed. I was just like so confused trying to watch that in in college. Really? Yeah. It? It's weird. <laughs> Did anyone in the chat like that movie? Like some people love it. I don't get it. Um, Mackenzie asked who was the friar? Um, is it is Friar Lawrence? Isn't that the scientist Lawrence? Like he's the one who oh. provides Juliet with the. So like Lawrence is going to marry them in the next book, maybe. <laughs> or at maybe. least have some, have some way. I to forgot end. that intricacy of the of the of the actual play. Like I haven't read it since I was fourteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Wait, warm bodies is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Uh, so is Twilight. Is it? It opens, yeah, yeah. It opens with the quote, like, these violent delights have violent ends and the, the whole passage. Yeah. Yeah. They're not know. retellings. They are, like, like vaguely inspired. inspired. Yeah. It's just because they're not supposed to be together. It's like the forbidden fruit. Oh, yeah. Right. It's clicking, it's clicking. Yeah. Let's see what else is Oh my God! She said, "I saw the last scene where Juliet shot herself." And I'm so confused. Is that from the Leo version? I she shoots herself. Oh God, that's violent. Um, okay, let's see. So we did predictions. Does anyone in the chat have any topics that you'd like us to cover that we haven't discussed yet? Because I feel like there's more to talk about here. Um, <laughs> But since I like, I'm like, oh my God, it was so gory and it was so, this is like not popping into my brain. Um, let's see there. I like that they made some jokes. So like there were, she pulled up the name Montague and he was like, that's the best you can do, Montague? That doesn't even sound real. <laughs> I was like, lol. She's like, I think it's Italian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the, the, like the, fashion references too, like the, her beaded dresses and stuff were fun to read about. And like, they were talking about how they were clinking while she was dancing, which was fun. I think how Marshall, when he was dying, he got his like a pox on both your houses line. I know, yeah, I remember like, that line stood out too. I was like, well. I also liked that uh, Juliet's dad was like, you have to come with me to the masquerade and uh, while, and translate for me while I pretend that I don't speak French. <laughs> okay, how, um, Taylor Swift songs for the characters. I actually like that. Hi. What? Our love story, obviously. Like Romeo, save me, <laughs> I've been feeling so alone. I love you. That's all I really know. <laughs> You're only saying that because that's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, oh, obviously. That's the obvious um, one. Juliet. It doesn't fit with them at all. <laughs> um, I can make it fit. So, like, when they are, when she's dying and Roma is also dying, <laughs> and they're, like, looking at each other as he's being, like, eaten by the bugs. And it's, like, she sings it to her. And she's, like, Juliet, save me. I'm feeling so 
No. Julia, yeah. see, look what you made me do, kind of. Yeah, and um, JR just said, Julia, I did something bad. I like that. Cruel summer. Why does it feel so good? Yes. Cruel summer. I don't want to keep secrets just to keep you. Yes, that's that actually fits perfect. <laughs> that cruel summer is like when they, the four years ago setting. Well, cruel summer could even be now when they're like sneaking around together, um, working together. Yeah, the cruel summer works really well. Um. Mm. The only scene I saw, and it was probably <laughs> pretty <laughs> Um, Let's see, one for- They are getting back together. Uh, but, but they are getting back together. No, in this book, in this book, no. Dancing. Well, they did kind of for a second. Dancing with our hands tied. Oh, I like that one. Yes, <laughs> I like the scene when they're like outside of um, the communist headquarters and they finally like, kind of confront each other on the lawn. Isn't that when they kiss for the first time? Do they kiss or they hold hands or something? Remember? They're like outside the communist stronghold and they just killed that guy. They kiss, but it's not the first time they kiss because they made out in the drunk. Yeah, but they were drunk. Um, and this was, yeah. this was Roma saying, I love you, and Julian saying, yeah. I'm gonna kiss you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're there, and he, she's like feeling all guilty for killing him because she's like, We were tricked. And he was like, You were doing it to save my sister, and you're, you're not a terrible, terrible, terrible person, just like a little terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, benders. Yeah, I think Juliet would definitely be a bloodbender. <laughs> And she would use that shit. Oh my god. I don't know. I like the idea of her being fire because she's. So I think like Roma has fire. Because he's more in control of the fire. Like, I feel like Roma would be good for fire. I feel like he's more grounded in Earth. He said that he explodes all at once instead of exploding. Just, you know, like he'll like keep it in until he explodes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, He's very controlled until he's not. <laughs> and Juliet just will automatically go. So it's not as intense when she does, ex she doesn't like burst, she just goes. <laughs> she just pops up. It's more like contained violence than like explosive <laughs> violence. <laughs> um, I liked Benedict as an earthbender. I think, oh, 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 um, Elisa is an airbender. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Tyler, fire. Oh, yeah, he's a non vendor Yeah, he just doesn't get a power. Sorry, Tyler. <laughs> <Tyler. laughs> he, he, he thinks he's more important than he is, and he's like all conceited. So yeah, I don't don't enjoy him. And I like the name Tyler, so I was annoyed that his name was Tyler. <laughs> It's just like it's just like in the Vampire Diaries, like the character of Tyler was so annoying, and I was like, "Damn you, taking a good name, <laughs> putting it to shame." Let's see, Marshall and Kathleen is here. Oh yeah, I can see Kathleen as an Airbender for sure. Um, Marshall, I, don't, I feel like I don't know Marshall well enough, but I trust your air assessment there. <laughs> I could see Marshall being air. I mean, I also associate these elements with, um, like, the astrological interpretations of elements, not just bending. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the air element is uh, all that, like, communication and, like, really talkative kind of thing. And I feel, I feel like that really fits Marshall. Oh, I'm thinking really looking at it as, like, how they handle themselves more. And, like, Elisa just feels like air because she's, like, so kind of, like you don't know she's there but she is and she's like an acrobat she like she's a, she's a rogue. she sneaks in and out <laughs> she's, a, she's a rogue oh let's do dnd classes <laughs> oh i'm not as good at those is that why yours says the bard because i'm like there's no bard in this shakespeare is the bard who shakespeare is the bard oh but like he's not actually there <laughs> But it's a Shakespeare story. <laughs> 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 
I don't think so. What? I don't know D and D. Oh, you I, don't, I don't know. You know, know basics like if it's like a do you play, if you play video games? It's like a, a mage or a fighter or a healer or a rogue. Mm. Romeo, Romeo, <laughs> nonviolent <laughs> please. No, guys, our things make a sentence. Romeo, Romeo, nonviolent delights, please. The bard. <laughs> okay, you better write that into your next book. <laughs> Put it in the acknowledgments. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it should be vacation. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, so do we want to like take one more question topic before we talk about our next okay. month again? I was very impressed that this is a debut. Like what a solid debut. She wrote it while she was in college. Yeah, she's a baby. Very cool. So is she a youth right now or is she has it been like years since she I started think, it? I think she just graduated. Cool. Hello? Did we lose you? Okay. Huh? You're back. You're back. Cat froze for a second. Oh. oh, yeah. Chloe Gong is a student at the University of Pennsylvania. Wow. That's a very smart school. Studying English and international relations. During her breaks, she's at home in New Zealand. Oh, my gosh. Does she? Is she? So she's from New Zealand. Visiting her many relatives in Shanghai, Chloe has been known to mysteriously appear when Romeo and Juliet is one of Shakespeare's best plays and doesn't deserve its slander in pop. Yeah, that's really cool. She wrote this in college. Every author that writes their book in college, you always hear them being like, you know, it was great to start early, but like I didn't really enjoy my college experience because all I did every night was write. <laughs> but I for her, damn. Like on top of homework and class. Yeah, it's just a lot. Yeah. Also writing a novel. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of oh my gosh, are we frozen? I, on the feed, mine is frozen. Is yours? No. Okay, good. Mine's buffering, so I'm gonna refresh the page. Um but yeah, that's really cool. That's like, do you remember being college age and seeing Veronica Roth had uh, published her novel and she was so young and feeling like, oh man, I, love, I missed my chance to publish a novel. I'll never be young and published. <laughs> it does not matter. Yeah, I mean like now, now obviously we, we know that that's not a true, not a good mindset to have, and it's not true at all. But I remember back then being like, oh my gosh, she's doing, she's done so much more than me, and she's only two years older. Oh man. When you started that sentence, we were like, do you remember when you were in college age? And I was just like, no, I don't remember. It's been so long. <laughs> I just remember specifically seeing that uh, Veronica Roth was so young and thinking she was like so cool, like the coolest person ever <laughs> uh, because she already had a published book. Okay, let's talk about next month. We will be reading The Lucky List by Rachel Lippincott. She is one of the co-writers of Five Feet Apart. This is a contemporary, it feels like you're gonna fly through it because it's like, it's oh, yeah. not very long. Um, and it looks really cute. Let's see the naked cover. Oh, it's yellow. It's very cute. And has a yellow spine. So this is going on my shelf like ASAP. <laughs> and we have a, a, a live show date for this already. We do. Um, we are doing this on uh, July 24th. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's a little, what? It's a little, it's a little early than usual. But yeah. The following weekend is uh, a little bit busier than usual. We have 21 days to read the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's and out it's, now. It's only like 300 pages, so. Yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna be a quick read. Yeah. I'm excited, I'm gonna read this on my plane home to Jersey. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. Hope you join us next month and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.